USS Wasp was the US Navy's seventh aircraft carrier and the fourth to be purpose-built as such, since the Yorktown-class USS Hornet had not yet been laid down. Wasp was a one-off. In the Washington Naval Treaty, each power had been allocated a certain total tonnage for aircraft carriers, as well as a weight limit on any single newly built unit. After the conversion of Lexington and Saratoga, the building of the USS Ranger, the US Navy had originally sought to use up the remaining tonnage with a class of carriers displacing, depending on which design they went with, either 23 or 27,000 tonnes. But they couldn't make any of those designs work the way they wanted, and so they ended up with the just under 20,000 tonne USS Yorktown and USS Enterprise. This left about 15,000 tonnes in their available displacement, and so a plan for a scaled-down version of the Yorktowns was drawn up to fill this slot. This would become USS Wasp. The US Navy wanted to keep a large air group, and so other features of the carrier's design were sacrificed in aid of this. She was, of course, a smaller vessel, but the machinery that was installed had a lower power-to-weight ratio, and the shafts were cut down from four to just two, with 70,000 shaft horsepower giving the ship a top speed of just under 30 knots, compared to just under 33 knots on her larger half-sisters. Armour over the machinery and aviation fuel tanks was also reduced to save weight, and the torpedo defence system was effectively eliminated. In part due to the desire to operate the same size and number of aircraft as the larger ships on the smaller hull, Wasp would also feature the first deck edge elevator, as the narrower beam meant fitting all three central elevators as per Yorktown was rather difficult. In a continued nod to weight saving, the lift was only solid near the ship where the front wheels of the aircraft would go, with the tail wheel supported only by a gantry arm. She was laid down in 1936, launched in 1939, and commissioned in 1940, fitted with CXAM-1 radar and carrying an air group made up largely of biplanes, this being a mix of F2F and F3F fighters, as well as SBU-1 bombers and the sole monoplane squadron VS-72 flying SBU-2 Vindicators. Over the course of the next year, as she reached full operational status, these would be gradually replaced until by the time the US entered World War II, her four squadrons were flying a mixture of F4F Wildcats, more SBU-2s, and the TBD-1 Devastator. During this period, she would also test fly the then US Army Air Force's P-40s to see if the Army aircraft could be operated from a carrier, a knowledge that would be very useful in the next few years. Her anti-aircraft armament as designed consisted of eight single 5-inch 38 caliber guns, 16 1.1-inch cannon in four quad mounts, and two dozen 50 caliber machine guns. The US Navy knew that WASP was somewhat less capable than its four larger carriers, and so, along with the also less well-protected USS Ranger, she initially operated in the Atlantic, where she participated in the occupation of Iceland, undertaken in July 1941 whilst the US was still technically at peace, putting her skills at flying off US Army Air Force aircraft to good use. After that, it was back to neutrality patrols, which progressed into convoy escort and hunting operations for German ships. She was still doing this when Pearl Harbor was bombed, and the US officially entered World War II, with her first operation being to keep an eye on potential Vichy French activity in the Caribbean, before being sent along with other warships to reinforce the British home fleet, accidentally ramming the destroyer USS Stack on the way. Although initially assigned to guard Arctic convoys to Russia, her first major combat operation would actually be more ferrying of land-based aircraft, this time to Malta in the Mediterranean. Leaving her strike craft behind in the UK, she sailed with only her Wildcat fighters for air defence and a force of Spitfires, which were duly launched towards Malta to reinforce the island's air defences. The loss of a number of these aircraft soon after to an Axis air raid meant that a second similar mission was launched alongside the older British carrier HMS Eagle. Heading back to the UK after a second round of successful ferrying, the crew were suitably amused to learn from German radio that they had in fact been sunk. Uh, they promptly salvaged the ship with a ceremonial bucket of water thrown overboard and kept going regardless. 
This was, however, the last operation she would undertake in the Atlantic, since while she'd been ferrying Spitfires, the Battle of the Coral Sea and the Battle of Midway had resulted in the loss of two American carriers and damage to others. She was therefore needed in the Pacific, and was given a quick refit, replacing her strike aircraft with Avengers and Dauntlesses before heading out with USS Saratoga and USS Enterprise for Guadalcanal, where, despite suffering turbine problems, she conducted a fairly successful support campaign, with only one airman killed and two injured, plus a further one missing in action, who would turn up later on. By mid-August, however, the Japanese had managed to send Enterprise and Saratoga home with damage, which left Wasp and Hornet to hold the fort. Along with the USS North Carolina, they were escorting reinforcements to the Guadalcanal Theatre when, on the 15th of September 1942, she was just completing flying operations when torpedoes were spotted in the water. This was a salvo of six long lances from the submarine I-19. Three struck the Wasp, whilst two more would hit the destroyer O'Brien and the North Carolina. Being hit by three torpedoes at once was bad enough. Them being long lances was worse, and all three hitting in the vicinity of her not particularly well-protected fuel and magazine stores was catastrophic. The explosions immediately wrecked any aircraft left aboard, regardless of their location, and started numerous fires, which began to spread rapidly, setting off ammunition, bombs, and other fuel tanks, plus cutting the water supplies to the forward part of the ship. And despite their best efforts, the crew could not stop the flames spreading, and as the damaged ship healed, more patches of fuel and pockets of gasoline vapour ignited, causing further explosions. Recognising the situation as untenable, the captain ordered the ship abandoned. However, for such a poorly protected smaller carrier, and despite more explosions, Wasp drifted afloat for several hours, eventually having to be sunk by several torpedo salvos from the USS Lansdowne. It needed several salvos due to the issues with US torpedoes at the time, but after three solid hits, the Wasp finally sank around 9pm. The wreck would be discovered earlier this year. It's broadly in one piece, and rests about four kilometres below the surface. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.